talking about. Okay? The body is a shifting modification of qualia in consciousness. You are not embodied. You never left home. <laughs> the body is, is like anything else, a concept. Space, time, energy, information, matter, these are human constructs in the same way as money is the human construct, as latitude, as Greenwich Mean Time. Who says Greenwich Mean Time should be standard time? Why not Botswana time? <laughs> we made up the whole thing. <laughs> the only reality is consciousness modifying itself into species-specific experiences. We are conscious agents, we are species of consciousness. And we are in a matrix of species of consciousness. And what we call the universe is all modes of knowing, all knowers, and all objects, I shouldn't say the objects, because there are no objects, only phenomena. Every object is, is perceptual activity. You look hard enough, you will not find a material object in the world, including your body. All you'll find is perceptual activity interpreted as objects. And that perceptual activity is consciousness modifying itself into this particular experience, which is the human experience. So we are participating in the human universe to the exclusion of all sentient beings, which are conscious agents creating their own universe. Of course, leaky margins, Rupert Sheldrake, will tell you that, you know, we have relationships with dogs and other species and they are even psychic because, in fact, fundamental reality is non-local, right? Every experience, love, compassion, joy, equanimity, perceptual activity, they're all entangled. And therefore, if human knowledge is rooted in consciousness, perhaps we are viewing not the real universe based on limitations of the brain. The brain itself is a perceptual experience. Can a perceptual experience give rise to perception? <laughs> Ask yourself that. Can an observed object create an observation? Your body is an observed object. And it's not even an object, it's a qualia experience and that furthermore a changing quality experience. So we are conscious agents who have created the universe in our own image. I would propose this as the new formula. Universe is consciousness. <laughs> okay. In Vedanta this is Brahman and Brahman. The universe is a species-specific experience in consciousness. The universe is a human construct. Mind, body, and world are appearances and a unified experience in human consciousness. There is only consciousness and its excitations. This is how we should actually use the word qualia. The word qualia has been around since 1925. But you know, you ask people, what is qualia? It's the smell of garlic, or it's the taste of onion. Qualia is all experience. Qualia is qualities of awareness, as awareness modifies itself into experience. So everyday reality is a human construct. Fundamental reality is the awareness, the excitations of which are the experience of observer and observed in the timeless, moment of now. Now, even though I say timeless moment of now, now is not a moment in time. Have you ever experienced a now coming from there, here, going there, followed by another now? So now is not in time. Only experience is in time, or the interpretation of experience is in time. The entire history of the universe is a human construct. 
based on current interpretation of perceptual experiences. You say, okay, that, you know, 65 million years ago there were dinosaurs. Well, you weren't there to experience dinosaurs. The experience, the picture you create of dinosaurs is through a human experience with a perceptual activity which is now, wasn't there. What did dinosaurs look like to other species at that time? We have no idea. Okay. So even the past of the universe is a human construct. The only experience you have is sensations. By the way, sensations and sense perceptions are the same thing. Okay, sense perceptions are qualities of consciousness, modifying itself, images, feelings, thoughts. SIFT is the acronym here. Systems of thought are many. It started from religion, theology, philosophy, science, econ, you know, all these systems of thought. Ask yourself, is reality accessible through a system of thought? Why do we presume that? Yes, science is successful, it's useful, it's the best model we have, but it's still a model. Can we know reality through a system of thought? No construct has a privileged position when it comes to understanding fundamental reality. The construct is real for the being that's embedded in it. Like my 14-year-old friend who came and said, men have landed on the moon, and the villagers said, that's not the moon we worship. We worship the moon that exists in our consciousness. And all experience is just that. And these excitations in, in the construct we call time, but awareness is not in time. Birth, death, mind, body, brain, universe, God, stars, galaxies, Big Bang, anything that has been given a name, a label, a construct. Freedom lies in the experience of identity beyond constructs. Pure awareness. Prior to subject-object split. Every act of perception, seen, creates a subject and object of experience. But the fundamental activity is seen. And seeing is an activity of consciousness. And when I'm saying seeing any perception. So subject-object split, on which all our science is based, and very good that we have this model because we can take jet planes and go to the moon. But it's not reality. If you want to answer the question, what is the meaning of birth, death, then models will not suffice. Because models are based on subject-object split, which is artificial. And all human suffering is due to attachment of a concept. You stub your toe, you say, where's the pain? It's in the toe. But actually, if I dull your perceptual activity anesthesia, there's no pain in the toe. That is a projected experience, just like your body is a projected experience. People have pains from phantom limbs. So death happens to an experience, not the awareness in which the experience dies. And consciousness, it's like timeless being, is not subject to birth and death and can modify itself into any experience, any experience. It is the attachment to construct that limits our ability to experience. But go back to the source and from there make choices. Creativity, imagination, mathematics, all the models we've created but there are many more to create because creativity is a never-ending horizon. Consciousness conceives, governs, constructs, becomes the perceived species-specific human experience, but fundamental reality is the matrix of all observers, all modes of observation, all objects observed as expressions of its own creativity. And ultimately, freedom which in the great wisdom traditions, Vedanta, non-duality, moksha, moksha literally means freedom, is in pure being. 
So my perception of change is that I have one minute and 37 <laughs> seconds. And I'm a human class, right? But let me ask you a question right now. And then we'll stop, okay? Are you present right now? Yes. Are you present? Can you be a little more enthusiastic? <laughs> Okay. Now I'm going to ask you the same question, but don't answer it, okay? Till I raise my hand, and then you can say yes again. Agree? Okay. Are you present right now? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So the question was a thought, the answer was a thought. They come and go, just like perceptions come and go. In between is you. And it has no form. So let me ask you the same question. Are you present right now? Don't answer it. <laughs> just be aware of being aware. This is the only reality. Everything else is a story. And this reality is not in time. This is what Ruby meant when he said, God's language is silence. Everything else is poor translation. <laughs> Thank you.